flavor it, well, I mean, Mary, what would be your flavor for buttercream? Vanilla usually. Okay. If I do an almond, if you are being mixed, but you probably want a clear liquid. Right. If we're trying to keep the buttercream white, always try to find clear extracts or flavorings. Not that uh, difficult to find these days. You can buy clear vanilla uh, at Wilton, Williams Sonoma, any of those places. If you use the compound, then you add the color to your buttercream. So strawberry compound, you get that nice pink color in there. And the compounds have a nice hearty concentrated flavor. So you're really going to be able to taste that. If you're not happy with your color, food color is always a good option to do. So with the powdered sugar, what speed are we going to start the mixer on? One. <laughs> or else? You will be breathing it, wearing it, and I like it. It goes boom. It does. It does go boom. It's definitely a common mishap. Now, with starting the bowl in the bottom, starting the paddle, and then bringing your bowl into the paddle, would that make a difference much or no? Oh, absolutely. It's kind of extremely difficult to get your bowl on after your paddle attachment's been added. So if you try that, best of luck. I'd love to see it happen. If you can, who knows? Uh, but I've never seen someone successfully, at least on a mix of this size, get their bowl in there once their paddle's on. You always need to do the bowl first, paddle after. So one of the other things that we can do, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, even on first speed with this amount of sugar would be to pulsate. So flip your mixer on, let it go for a second before it really revs up, turn it back off. At home when I do it in a, on my KitchenAid, I use a towel yep. over the top. Would you do that in a Absolutely. Uh, a lot of times, especially when you're doing stuff like whipped cream, if you need that like now, take a whole thing of plastic wrap and cover it here. You can tuck the plastic wrap under the lip of your bowl and that would get your cream, it not only doesn't fly out, but it's not dripping down your bowl. So you can actually take that and bring out your plastic. You can save all that cream. So the nice thing about these mixers is they do slow down gradually. So we're just gonna kind of pulse, try to keep most of the sugar from flying out on us. I think we're getting there. And now we'll just leave it running. So does anyone have any questions about how the American buttercream is started? So it's with butter, Crisco short, we'll spray up the bowl, add Crisco, mix it a little bit, and then add your cocoa stone sugar. Well, Just, uh, it's salt and confection and sugar. Mm -hmm. What's the ratio of salt to sugar? Um, not positive, honestly, uh, but I do know that the salt is only just about a teaspoon, tablespoon, depending on the recipe. So this one's a little bit more. It's mostly it's the salt to butter and the oh, fat okay. that you're concerned with. The sugar just add it in because it's already a dry ingredient, so you just want to keep those together. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and let that mix. I'm gonna step into the walk-in and grab my egg whites, and then we're gonna finish this up so that we can move into piping. Yes, that is the bowl scraper. So you would obviously use this side to cook. Yeah. Yes, the bowl scraper, especially because if you pinch it, you get great flexibility with those, so you really can follow the curve of your bowl, and which is very nice. Yep, yeah, absolutely. With something like this, wear a glove if you're making a mousse, that's ready to eat food, wear a glove there. There are other things, you know, when you're going in with a dough, you don't need to wear a glove then, because you're going to be baking that, so try to uh, just Think about when you need them and when you don't. I really like to seal these up. There we go. Okay, right, so anytime you're using uh, egg whites out of a carton, just remember to shake them before you use them. They're mostly water, and so everything kind of settles on the bottom, so you just want to keep them nice and mixed. So for this, portion, we are going to go right ahead and switch out our paddle for our whip. Uh, it's personal preference, in my opinion, uh, when you do this. 
Depending on what you're using your buttercream for, you might not want to switch away from the paddle. Can anyone tell me why or what desired effect the whip is going to give us that the paddle can't? The whip is going to give you a fluffier. Well, yes. Consistency. A lot more air uh, when we're doing wedding cakes or birthday cakes. One of the things we want to avoid in our buttercream is a lot of air because then that's a lot of time spent going back over and over and over. Thank you, Kyle. Going back over our cake to smooth out those air pockets that we have from our buttercream. So really typical practice would be to make your buttercream a day before, go ahead and whip it the way we're going to, and then let it sit overnight so that that air kind of deflates out of the buttercream, and then in the morning, re-paddle it just to get it soft and malleable so you can work with it again. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on second. We're so on like a meringue where you want it really fluffy, because you stuff it up. Not all the time. Sometimes you do want a really nice, light, fluffy buttercream. It depends on what you're using. If I'm just going to decorate a cupcake, sure, why not? Whip it, get a lot of air in it. It also is going to increase the volume because of that air, so I can stretch my buttercream, and in a sense, I'll have more to use. But like I said, with the cake, I don't want air pockets all along the sides of my cake. I want my cake smooth as if it's covered in fondant, even when it's just buttercream. So I don't want to have those air pockets, and I don't want to take all that time to have a hot spatula and go over and over and over and just wasting my own time when I can avoid some of that by just using the paddle attachment. So that doesn't want to come out like this. We're going to go ahead and add this in some portions. Keep it on first just so they don't spill everywhere. I think seconds going to be just okay for us. So if you notice too in the bowl, obviously we all know that butter has that really nice yellow color, but how Anna, how white is my buttercream looking? <laughs> All right. We're getting what we want. And before we finish, we're going to go ahead and throw this up on third speed and really get some air in there so that we have nice, nice, soft buttercream for you guys to pipe with. Does anyone have any questions about where we're going next? All right, how many people have used a piping bag before? All right. Successfully? Successfully. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll show you, Kyle. All right, so let's just do one last scrape just around the edges, close to the bottom. <coughs> Try to make sure we're not missing anything. And let's let this whip. Kyle, would you go towards the sink and grab me a couple more spatulas so you guys can all fill your bags together? Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. We can go ahead and put this up on third. Won't take long from here. American buttercream, pretty quick, easy, generally cheap. Sounds great. We can leave those on the table with everybody else over there.